Good evening and welcome to Tinkering with Edkelar. For the first release in 2021, I have another camera restoration. This time it is also a project for a friend again. A Kodak Duaflex. A very simple camera from the late 40s to the early 50s. It still uses the same simple shutter mechanism that the first box cameras used, but it also has a top-down viewfinder and a connection for an electrical flash. The case has quite a few scuffs and dents in it, so, like usual, a disassembly is called for. Also, there is one screw missing in the neck strap. For the Film Advance knob, Kodak included a set of tiny springs and pins to make sure it only turns one way. I've seen dust around the house that is larger. Yes, I would need to clean more often, thanks. Overall, the case is held together with screws and clever interleaving of parts. This assembly revealed a deteriorated gasket on the top edge of the film door. The front part with the lenses is a stack of three sheets of metal riveted together. Hmm, I have to get some rivets. Not an easy task these days, but I found very close ones. So, off with their heads! And give the new ones a bit of polish. The tab that holds the film door closed is bent. Because it sits flush against the curve of the door, I also need to remove the rivets and bend it back into shape. The mirror brackets are also bent out of shape. It seems that the camera has taken a fall at some time. For the lenses and mirror I use my ultrasonic cleaner while the shutter mechanics just get dusted off and a drop of oil. The springs look way too fragile to touch. After carefully bending and hammering the sheet metal as straight as possible, I sanded off the rough spots and removed as much of the old paint as I could. The film door has some grip material glued to it and a printed label on the inside that I wanted to preserve, so I taped off these parts. I'm giving it a coat of filler primer and two coats of black paint.
reassembly starts off with the rivets. First, the mirror. Sheesh, talk about holding your breath. It's one thing to hit your paw, but this could lead to seven years of bad luck. Next, the lens assembly is rebuilt and riveted. Same procedure, slightly more clearance to the glass. And last but not least, the latch for the film door also gets reattached. The next strap needed a new screw. I decided to give my lathe a run and made not one, but two new screws. The thread in the case was worn out and called for a slightly bigger screw, and to match both sides, I just made my own version. Cutting the slot for the screwdriver required me to throw together an improvised holder in my model making mill and a Dremel cutting disc. But it worked! I also gave them a hint of nickel plating. Screwing the pieces together was a bit wobbly. It's one of those origami-like cases where either everything snaps into place at once or everything falls apart again. Another nerve-wracking part was the film advance knob. Remember those tiny springs? They can fly off quite a large distance. I'm glad I found all of them again. A pinch of grease helps to lubricate the knob as well as hold the springs in check during assembly. Now for the final part, the functional test. Kodak tried to run with their own type of film called 620. It is basically the same as the common 120 films, but the spools are a hair narrower so the 120 won't fit. I have to transfer a 120 film to the old spools so I can load the camera. After taking a few shots around the workshop, I removed the exposed film and headed for the darkroom. Only to find that I'm out of film developer. <laughs> I had to improvise with paper developer, but it worked out okay. Spooling the film into the developer drum, develop, rinse, fixate, rinse and voila, pictures!
So that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed joining in. See you next time. It's one thing to hit your paw, but this could lead to seven years of bad luck. For a black cat, no less.